Hello and welcome to Art Lab with Miss Neff. Um, today, for a more advanced project, we are going to learn how to bind a small booklet. So we're going to do a type of binding. Um, it's a Japanese book binding technique. You don't need very many things that are high tech. You can honestly do this with stuff lying around your house. Because we're making a book, the first thing you want is paper. Um, I have some white paper here, but I've actually bound a couple of notebooks with scratch paper, lined paper, colored paper. Really, you just want to make sure it's all the same size. You know, if you have a bunch of pieces that are different sizes, cut them down so they're all the same size. I recommend starting with no more than 10 sheets. Right, if you have 10 sheets, it'll be 20 because we're going to fold them in half. Uh, make a small booklet to start and then, you know, if you really like this project, you can come back to this video and you can make a larger, um, a thicker book. You are going to want some things to hold your pages down. So we have to do a little bit of sewing. Um, and you want to, when, when you're doing that, you want to make sure that your pages are all held down. Um, so if you have binder clips at home, get some of those out. If you don't have binder clips at home, you can use other clip like objects. So for example, a bobby pin. Bobby pins actually work pretty well for holding paper together. Uh, paper clips work great too. So like I said, you can get creative. You don't necessarily need all the fancy things. Um, you're gonna want scissors for cutting your thread, but also we can use them to really crease down our paper. Um, when you bind your book, you have to sew it together with something. A lot of book binding techniques ask that you use um, what's called waxed thread. You probably don't have that in your house. I don't have that in my house. So you can do two things. You can use dental floss, which is essentially waxed thread. Or you can use, you know, if you have colored thread and you want to use a certain color of thread, that's fine too. If you have the option between um, an embroidery needle and a regular sewing needle, I recommend an embroidery needle. Well, the reason I recommend if you have an embroidery needle is because they're a little bit stronger. They don't flex as much. Um, and also when you're stabbing through your stack of papers to get through the other side, because of its length, it's easier to manipulate. It's easier to use. Other things that you want, you are going to want um, a ruler. If you don't have a ruler, you can still do this project. You just need a straight edge. We are gonna use the ruler to measure things, but like I said, um, I'll show you a way around that. You're going to want some form of pen. You're also going to want to use either um, a thumbtack or a pin to poke a hole through your papers. Uh, you're going to want some sort of like cardboard or something to make uh, the cover. If you have fabric, you can actually cover your cereal box in fabric. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to do that for this video. But it's pretty easy. You just lay down glue, you put the fabric on top, you smooth it out, you let it dry. If you want to do that, I'll make a point in the video and if you choose to do that, you can do that. Because um, you do want to put the fabric on it before you bind your whole book together. You know, you can even like cut out a piece of like fun paper and glue that on too and that's even easier than fabric. So you can decorate it. Like I said, I'm not going to in the video. I'm going to show you the basics and if you want to get really creative with this you totally can and in fact I encourage it. Yesterday just to kind of practice and also make one um, this is sort of the binding that we're gonna do. It is not perfect this this book that I made is not perfect and part of that reason is to show you the importance of being perfect. During the steps if you don't pull tight enough this is what will happen. If you do not carefully hold your papers together they will come out at different lengths on the sides. If you're not careful, it doesn't look very good. You can poke it through a different area. It doesn't look as good. I recommend cardboard for the cover, but if you don't have that, you can also use, this is just a brown paper bag from King Supers. Um, and I made this one with actually scratch paper. So, like I said, you can basically use whatever you, whatever you want. All right, let's get started. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to fold every single piece of paper in half. I'm using regular white printer paper, so the measurements are eight and a half by 11, and I will be using measurements later when we go to poke holes in our paper 
based on the measurements of eight and a half and 11 inch paper. When you have all your papers together, um, kind of, you know, pat them down, get them organized and straightened up and then clip them together with your binder clip, bobby pins, whatever sort of clips you have laying around. So line your papers up so that you're measuring on the folded edge, so the area where you've creased and you're going to measure down from the right and left side from that creased edge three quarters of an inch. Connect your two points. Now we're going to measure where we're going to poke holes so we can sew our book together. You are going to measure an inch in from each side. So if you have your ruler lined up one to eight and a half inches, you're going to make a tick mark on the one and a tick mark on the seven and a half. To properly bind our book, we need four holes. So you're gonna make a tick mark on the five and a half and a tick mark on the three inch mark as well. Once you've marked where your holes are going to be, you're going to take your thumbtack or enamel pin and you're going to punch a hole through every sheet of paper where that tick mark is. Once that's done, it's time to move on to the book cover. So get your cardboard out and we're going to make that. So using your book as a template, um, Either trace right around it or draw tick marks where each corner is so that you can use your ruler to draw between those tick marks to create a rectangle that is the same size as your book. And of course you want to do this twice because you need a front and a back cover. So when you've measured your front and your back cover, you're going to cut them out. And then after you cut them out, if you want to cover um, your book cover in fabric, or fun paper, this is where you would do it. After you have your front and your back cover, you want to make the same tick marks, the same measurement lines as you did for your paper. So remember, that's three quarters of an inch down, draw a line in between those, and then you're going to make a tick mark on the one inch, the three inch, the five and a half inch, and the seven and a half inch. Do this for the front and back cover. Just like you did with your paper, punch holes on each tick mark made for your front and back cover. Now we wanna put our cover on our book. So this part's a little bit tricky cause you gotta really line things up pretty well. So just do your best. I kinda put the cover on top of, I guess what would be my front, double check that my holes on my cover are lined up with my holes on my paper. And then I do the same thing for the back cover. When you're done, clip the front of the book and cover. So not the spine, but where your paper flaps open. So not the folded paper, but where the paper flaps open, you wanna clip that down. You can also clip the sides if you'd like, um, though you are going to take those off pretty soon. You do not need to write front and back on yours, but I put front and back on mine so I can help you with this tutorial. Now it's time to get your string out. So I am using some pink embroidery floss. And in the video, I measure times seven the length of my book, but you can actually just do times five. Um, I always worry I'm gonna run out of string, so I did times seven. If you're worried about it like me, you can also do times seven, but times five will work just fine. Cut it and then thread your needle. So we're getting really close to binding the book. Take your side clips off if you put those on and then open up your book and find the fifth page in there. That's the middle of your book. You are going to stick your needle through the second hole, through the middle of your book. The needle is going to poke out the back side. You're going to pull it through and you're going to leave a little tail of yarn in the middle. The reason for that is at the very end of this book, we're going to use that thread that's lying in the center of our book to tie a knot and that's going to finish off our entire binding. So tuck in that thread that's in the middle of your book so it doesn't get in the way. And then get your thread and you're going to go from that second hole from back to front. So it's going to go around what will be the spine of your book. Make sure that you pull tight. If you don't pull tight, your binding will be loose.
after that, you're going to poke your needle through the third hole. Right, so you're going from the back to the front of your book, poke it through that hole, pull tight. Just like earlier, we're gonna go around the spine and back through that same hole that our needle uh, just came through. So pull tight, and then you're going to go from hole three to hole four. So poke your needle through the fourth hole and pull tight. And again, around the spine and through the fourth hole. Now you're going to take your thread and you're going to go around the bottom of your book and through that fourth hole again. If you do this correctly, you should have a little rectangle um, at the very bottom of your book. Now connect that line between your fourth and third hole. Pull tight. Repeat this step between hole three and hole two. And then again between hole two and hole one. So poke your needle through that very top. All right, and then we're going around the spine again, so from front to back through that first hole. And then just like we did at hole four where we made the little rectangle, we're gonna do that again for the top of the book. So you're gonna go around the top of the book and back through hole one. So you're almost done. This is the trickiest part of the entire binding process. You're going to go from hole one to hole two, but instead of going all the way through hole two, you're just going to go to the middle of your book where that string from the very first time we started binding our book is. Um, I find it's easiest to poke your needle in sort of a diagonal manner to get it through to that center page. So pull your needle through. Um, you do want to pull the string really tight. And then when you've got your string through and you've pulled it tight, you're going to get your scissors out and you're going to cut it. And then you're going to double knot as tightly as you can in the center of that book. So there's one knot and then this is my second knot. After you've got your double knot, Cut as closely to the knot as you can in the middle of your book. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're just going to fold the cover. So I'm using a ruler, but you can actually just use your hands. You don't need a ruler. I kind of use the ruler to sort of make a better crease. You're going to crease that cover. And then every time you turn a page, you're going to crease that page too. And that's just part of this binding. And there you have it. You got a book. All right, so if you followed along, you should have a little booklet. Um, I know it's kind of tricky, but I figured since you're at home and, I don't know, maybe your sketchbook's running out of pages, now you can have a little sketchbook. Um, if you like this, let me know. I can do another book tutorial. And yeah, I hope that everybody's staying safe at home and you're all having a good time, and I will see you next time.